At Naha Air Base in Okinawa, on the southern tip of Japan, young pilot Sho Yoshida is in a drill to get airborne as quickly as possible. He's got five minutes. He checks his oxygen and puts on his G-suit. It will keep the blood in his brain as his jet fighter travels at two and a half times the speed of sound. His nickname is Kikas, and like the Japanese fighters of old, he's prepared to sacrifice his life for his country. The horrors of war have shaped and defined Japan. But almost 70 years since the end of World War II, Japan has changed its pacifist constitution and unleashed its defence force. Regional tensions are cranking up. These pilots have seen more close calls and scrambles in the last year than in the previous decade. The new foe is an old one, China. In his F-15, Yoshida can reach the Senkaku Islands in 20 minutes. It's the region's biggest flashpoint. China lays historical claim to the rocky islets it calls Diaoyu, but Japan administers them. And it's not about to let go without a fight. Japan's Prime Minister Shinzo Abe has harnessed concern about China and moved to transform Japan's self-defense force into an offensive one. He's empowered his army, navy and air force to act first. Foreign correspondent has been granted unprecedented access to key elements of Japan's increasingly battle-ready military. Japan is at an historic point. Militarism and nationalism are on the rise, and many fear the country is heading down the war path once again. This is the destroyer Miyoko, and the captain is Tushinori Matsumi. Hello, nice to meet you. Hi, Captain, how are you? Welcome to Miyoko. He has extraordinary firepower at his disposal. BMD. But it's not what's on the outside that's impressive. We've been given special clearance to enter the Combat Information Centre, or CIC. Only a select few officers are allowed to work here. And this is the very heart of Japan's defence system. This is their eyes and ears on the world. They can track and destroy anything in North Asia. So if China or North Korea dispatch a missile or a jet fighter, they'll see it here first on these screens. And the order to strike back will come from here. Executive officer Suyoshi Sato will show us how it all works during a regulation drill. Information about any potential attack is relayed from radar systems across the country. It shows up on these screens.
From this war room, Executive Officer Sato can direct and coordinate combat. Supercomputers help him analyse the incoming threat and recommend the best response. The capabilities are immense. The CIC can handle a hundred threats at the same time within 500 kilometres. And the missiles will be fired from here. A special vertical launching system has been developed to maximise impact. 90 can be delivered within minutes. For those with long memories, Japan's military moves are deeply worrying. What's the diameter? 94-year-old Tadamasa Iwahi has seen it all before. He was around when Imperial Japan beat the nationalist drum last century. He enlisted in the dying stages of World War II. He became a kamikaze. So this is uh, the human torpedo. Iwai was a special kind of kamikaze, a human torpedo. His mission was to strap himself into a mini submarine and slam it and 500 kilograms of explosives on board into enemy ships. It was, of course, a suicide mission, but in the end, he became too sick to carry out his assignment. He eventually resolved Japan's war was foolish, and now he's worried Prime Minister Abe is leading the nation down the same path. There are many young people fighting against their country's new muscular posture. These protesters have rejected their government's manipulation of constitutional constraints to build up the military into an attack force. They claim Abe has subverted the democratic process. The way Ushida and his friends see it, they might be the ones fighting Japan's next war, and they don't want any part of it. But while the protesters rage, the military might grows, fueled by a military budget that's now the seventh largest in the world. The government isn't just spending money on hardware, 
It's spending big to lure personnel as well. The recruitment ads featuring local pop star Haruka portray the armed forces as cool and urge young people to enlist. The message, a career in the defence force can fulfil any dream. And here's where they aspire to be. Japan's equivalent of West Point or Duntroon. It's a tough place to crack. Only one in ten top applicants get in. Staying the course is even harder. Unsurprisingly, it's produced some of the nation's best and brightest commanders. The daily schedule can be punishing. Cleaning the floor is an exercise in obedience and unquestioning respect. Here, second year students break in the newcomers. And if the recruits don't measure up, punishment is immediate. This year, the academy is crowded. 2,000 are now training to be leaders. Enrolments are at an unprecedented level and record numbers are turning up to entrance exams. 21-year-old Michio Onji has made it to fourth year. He's been tagged as a future leader. A couple of decades ago, the military was seen as a last resort for failed police recruits or the unemployed. Now it's a prestigious career choice. High visibility in national relief efforts, like that following the 2011 tsunami, has bolstered the military's image as well. なんか、自衛隊は税金泥棒だったり、なんか結構何もしてないとかいうそういう風評被害もあったんですが、そのやっぱり災害派遣活動や国際貢献活動等を通して、自衛隊はまあその活躍がやっぱり認められて、世の中
And with that reality a little bit closer, Onji and fellow cadets are thinking more deeply about that possibility. まあ、まあ、to outside eyes, Japan's efforts to redefine its military and rebrand its image can look quite bizarre. On this warm summer's night in Tokyo, we're heading to see one such charm offensive, a matchmaking cruise where women and military personnel speed date in the hope of a relationship. <laughs> These nights staged by the SDF are proving very popular. Women had to win a lottery to secure their place on the cruise. 28-year-old Shiho Yano is seeking an SDF man who's reliable and serious. Armed with a list of names and numbers, the girls can expect to meet as many as 70 men in an hour. Shiho gets a few offers, but eventually she finds a man she's interested in. <laughs> they move upstairs to the deck to get to know each other a little better. Shiho seems more than impressed. <laughs> And that's not beyond the realm of possibility. The last cruise has so far brought two marriages. But beyond the matchmaking services and marketing ploys, some ultra-nationalist elements are attaching themselves to the military's ascendancy. This group, one of 50 from the extreme right, call themselves the new social order and normally inhabit the internet. Now they're showing their faces on the street, all but daring the police to shut them down. They claim Japan is a US puppet state. They want to bring back the glory days of Imperial Japan, when the country ruled much of Asia. They also want all Koreans and Chinese living in Japan expelled. These groups are fringe dwellers, but Tashio Tamagami is helping to usher them into the mainstream. あの、
He's an ex-general who shares many of the ultra-right's views. And in Tokyo's governor elections earlier this year, Tamagami captured a quarter of the youth vote, the second highest. Tamagami was sacked as head of the SDF Air Force for asserting Japan did not fight a war of aggression in World War II. Tamagami says the Nanjing massacre in 1937 in China is a myth. Historians say up to 300,000 Chinese were raped and murdered by the Japanese Imperial Army. He also believes Japan shouldn't have apologised to South Korea for its use of comfort women or sex slaves during its brutal occupation of Asia. あの、当時の、もう陸軍大将、海軍大将と同じぐらいの給与を得てたわけですから、全くセックスレーブというのは当てはまらないんですよね。Coming here to the Yasukuni shrine is another provocation. To critics, a visit here by a politician like Tamagami is seen as an endorsement of Japanese atrocities committed before and during World War II. But he says he wants the nation to honour its war dead as martyrs, including the 13 Class A war criminals that are enshrined at Yasukuni. Japanese Tadamasa Iwahi, the kamikaze who became a pacifist, believes a nation that hasn't dealt with its past is destined to repeat history. He's made it his mission to educate new generations about Japan's warrior past. He says Japan's younger generations aren't taught the realities of Imperial Japan pre-World War II and are largely unaware of the atrocities it committed. He wants them to understand so they don't make the same mistakes he believes he and the nation did. <laughs> Prime Minister Shinzo Abe has assured the people Japan will never again wage a war of aggression and the moves to change the constitution allowing the military to fight overseas are about securing peace and security for the nation. But what's clear is that the Japanese are anxious and confused about the future direction and are fearful of what the increasing tensions with China will bring. <laughs>